Hello everybody and welcome to tonight's video on functions. We've already started to discuss functions when we were talking about relations, uh, but tonight's video we're going to talk a little bit more specifically about functions and performing some operations with functions. So first of all we'll start with function notation and when we're talking about function notation uh, basically we're going to take some of the things that we're familiar with. So we've already been talking about equations in y equals form. But when we have an equation that represents a function, we'll use what's called function notation, or f of x equals uh, form. So, for example, instead of saying something like y equals 9x plus 7, we can say f of x equals 9x plus 7. So the way I would say that is f of x. The name of the function is f. X is still our independent variable that we had back when we were talking about relations in the last video. But in this case, we're going to say f of x to identify this function f. And the reason that we like to use this is because it makes it easier to evaluate functions for different values. So those different inputs or elements of the domain that we mentioned the other day um, it makes it a lot easier to calculate these different uh, function values. So for example, if I have this function f of x equals x squared minus 5. If I want to find these different values of the function for different values of x, it's easy to just input the different values. So find the value of f of x where x equals 3. I'm just going to replace the x with a 3. So f of 3 equals 3 squared minus 5. So now I can evaluate that. 3 squared is 9. 9 minus 5 equals 4. Now, what I like to do is always make sure that when I'm putting in a value, I put it in, in parentheses. So I'm going to replace this x with the parentheses just as I see it right here. And the reason for that is I want to make sure that I don't lose a negative sign. So if I wanted to evaluate this function for f of negative 2, when I replace this x, I'm going to put the negative 2 in parentheses. So I have negative 2 squared minus 5. So negative 2 squared is negative 2 times negative 2, which is 4. So 4 minus 5 equals negative 1. That's really important because if you tried to plug that into your calculator and you didn't have parentheses around the negative 2, sometimes the calculator will put that negative sign out in front and just square the 2. So you would have negative 4 minus 5, which is a much different answer than negative 1, right? That would be negative 9. So you want to make sure that you get in the habit of making sure that this item that you are replacing for x, uh, this value, you put it in parentheses so that you're squaring the whole thing. So that you're doing negative 2 squared, so negative 2 times negative 2. So just get in the habit of making sure you don't lose a negative sign somewhere. So that's how we would evaluate. We plug in these different values for x. And you might see some other examples where they replace the x with like another variable. So we could have something here like f of 2b. So instead of x, they're going to replace this with 2b. So again, I put that in parentheses. So this would be 2b squared minus 5. Right? So I'm just replacing my x with 2b. It's a different variable. It's got a 2 attached out in front, the coefficient. Um, but that's okay. We can still do exactly what we've been doing with these other ones where we just use uh, 3 and negative 2. So now I have 2b squared, right? And so that's a product, so I would square each part of the product. So 2 squared is 4, b squared is b squared, and I still have that minus 5 on the outside. So 4b squared minus 5 is how I would evaluate that. Okay, so those are evaluating functions. Now we can do some other things. We can actually do operations with functions. So we can add them together. We can subtract them, we can multiply, and we can divide. And you'll see these written as f plus g of x equals f of x plus g of x. So you would take each function and add them together. Here the difference f of f minus g of x is f of x minus g of x. The product f times g of x is f of x times g of x. And then here we have the quotient f over g of x equals f of x over g of x. So you'll see them written together like this. And you'll know that to, in order to determine this, 
product, you would just write out each function separately and then either multiply them together over here with the sum, you add them together or subtract. Here you're going to write it as f of x over g of x. And we're not going to really simplify anything much more than that besides to say what values we cannot have. So g of x cannot equal 0, and that goes back to our discussion the other day about domains where we don't want to have a 0 in the denominator because that would make this undefined. So really, you'll just go to the trouble of writing f of x over g of x and then just say x cannot equal whatever number or whatever values would give you 0 for g of x. So if we did an example of each one of these, find the sum, difference, product, and quotient of f of x equals 2x plus 3 and g of x equals negative 5x plus 6. If I do that, first of all, let's do the sum f plus g of x. And so that equals f of x plus g of x. And so again, I kind of want to get in the habit of writing these in parentheses. So I'm going to write this entire function f of x, which is 2x plus 3, in parentheses. And then I'm going to add that to negative 5x plus 6. I just want to get in the habit of that so that I know I'm like rewriting this exactly as I see it up here when I put it into this expression. And now I'll write it without the parentheses. The reason I do that and make this like a two-step process is because I want to make sure I'm not losing any negative signs anywhere. So here I have 2x plus 3. And now this is plus negative 5x. I'm just going to write that as minus 5x plus positive 6. So that's plus 6. And so now I'll combine like terms. So the x terms go together. I have 2x and negative 5x. So that's going to be negative 3x. And then I have positive 3 and positive 6. 3 plus 6 is 9. So negative 3x plus 9 is the sum of these two functions. So f plus g of x equals negative 3x plus 9. If I want to find the difference, if I want to take f minus g of x, I can write that as f of x minus g of x. And I would rewrite this first with parentheses, 2x plus 3 minus negative 5x plus 6. And here's where it comes in handy to have this in parentheses. So now when I rewrite it without the parentheses, 2x plus 3, I'm going to think of distributing this negative sign almost. So I'm going to multiply each one of these by negative 1, or just think of you're subtracting each item inside here. So negative or minus negative 5x, so minus a negative would be positive, so it's really plus 5x. And then subtracting positive 6 is really minus 6. So now again, combine like terms, 2x and 5x gives me a total of 7x. And now combine the constants, 3 and negative 6 would give me negative 3, right? So f minus g of x is 7x minus 3. Now moving on to the quote, uh, product, rather, multiplying these together. So f times g of x is f of x times g of x. And again, we write everything out in parentheses first. So 2x plus 3 times negative 5x plus 6. And now, having written these in parentheses, I can see that I'm going to do the FOIL method of multiplying together two binomials. So let's multiply the first terms together. So that's 2x times negative 5x. 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. x times x is x squared. Now I want to multiply the outside terms. First, outside, inside, last. So the outside terms are 2x and 6. And so 2x times 6 is 12x. Then I multiply the inside terms together, and that's going to be 3 and negative 5x. So that's minus 15x. And then I multiply the last terms together, and that's 3 and 6. 3 times 6 is 18. And the last thing I'm going to do is just clean this up by combining the like terms. So I have negative 10x squared plus 12x minus 15x would give me negative 3x. 
and then I have plus 18 by itself. Okay, and moving on to the final uh, operation of the quotient. So f over g of x equals f of x over g of x. And here, like we said, I'm not going to really have to do too much more besides writing this as f of x, which is 2x plus 3 over g of x, which is negative 5x plus 6. And that's pretty much it. First time I do it, I write it with the parentheses. You can write it again without the parentheses. And write this as negative 5x plus 6. And now, off to the side, I want to say what x cannot equal. So I can't have 0 in the denominator. So to find out what x is, sometimes it's real easy. I can just tell by looking at it. But in this case, we're going to say off to the side, g of x cannot equal 0. Right? I don't want that to equal 0. So I write g of x, say cannot equal 0, and now I have to solve for x. So I would subtract 6 from each side. I'd say negative 5x cannot equal negative 6. So I want 0 down there. Now I divide both sides by negative 5. And so x cannot equal negative 6 over negative 5. x cannot equal 6 fifths. So that would be the final part of my answer here. I write this out as f of x over g of x, and then I'd put a little semicolon there, and I'd say x cannot equal 6 fifths, because that would give me a 0 in the denominator, and it would make this undefined. Okay, so that's operations on functions. Now we can also take all of these operations and evaluate them just like we evaluated our functions before. So I can do something like f plus g of 2, right? And you can kind of do this in two ways. You can either evaluate f of 2 plus g of 2, or you can go through and add the two functions together and write them as a separate function and then evaluate that for 2. So like we have up, up top here, we had our two functions 2x, f of x equals 2x plus 3, and g of x equals negative 5x plus 6. So my options here are to do f plus g of x and get negative 3x plus 9. So we know that f plus g of x, I'll write this kind of separately, f plus g of x equals what we have up here, negative 3x plus 9. And then I have f of x equals 2x plus 3 plus 3 and g of x equals negative 5x plus 6 okay so what I can do here first there's two ways that I can do this I can either figure out what f plus g of x is first and then evaluate that for 2 so I could do f plus g of 2 and I could just plug in my 2 here so I have negative 3 times 2 plus 9 and so negative 3 times 2 is negative 6 plus 9 and that equals 3 or over here I could do f of 2 which is 2 times 2 plus 3 which is 4 plus 3 which is 7 and then I could do g of 2 which is negative 5 times 2 plus 6, so negative 10 plus 6, which is negative 4. And then, having figured out those two things separately, I can write out f of 2 plus g of 2 equals 7 plus negative 4, which equals 3. So you kind of have two different ways that you can approach this. You can either do the operation on the functions f plus g of x and get that expression negative 3x plus 9 and plug in f plus g of 2 or evaluate each function separately for the value you're looking for f of 2 and g of 2 and then once you get that answer add them together so those are a couple options for you to do tomorrow in class we'll do some more operations on the different functions and then we will uh, do some more problems like this where we're evaluating functions where we're already doing an operation and then also functions where we're just evaluating separately. 
So bring your notes with you tomorrow in class. We'll do a quick note check and review to start class, and then we'll do some practice problems. Have a great night.